Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. I have a question which someone asked me is, you know, I did a, a, a recent uh, video on stable coins and person asked me, as a remittance, as a money transfer company, should they look at stable coins? Because their understanding is that this is a token, it can be traded amongst all the parties and they don't have to do this pre-funding and you know investment here and there and they don't have to block their money etc and that a stable coin or a stable token makes a lot of sense for purposes of money transfer so here's my answer it depends when this ico thing started in 2018 and 2019 and there was a huge huge you know uh, thing about it a lot of people thought that stable coins were going to be it for purposes of value transfer. A lot of many companies raised money on it, etc. Now we tracked about 32, 33 companies and literally all of them, all 32, 33 companies that raised money in this arena have failed and failed miserably in some cases, meaning that the original you know, notion that they will use their coin for purposes of transfer and you can always peg it with a stable coin, you know, whatever Nikon coin or Apple coin, whatever you want to call it, etc. And you know, it will be going all around the world and people would be making payments using this coin. It never happened. Right now, out of all the contenders, there are two that come to mind that somehow may have a game. There is the XRP by Ripple and there is the XLM by Stellar. These two companies are perhaps the only two companies that are poised to play in this game. Everyone else that I can think of or I know of are not basically being taken seriously. Uh, yes, there are companies who will say claim and say, hey, listen, our entire premise of making our stable coin was for the purposes of B2B trade or B2B payments and you can put it in the network and everyone would accept it. But the fact of the matter is it's not being used. In most cases, the intention is has been very noble in most cases, not all, but in most cases. But the reality is that the traction never came. They tried, they tried the regulations, the licensing, all those regimes, then, you know, all those problems came onto you. And then you realize, you know, this is not as easy as it sounds. The, you need a whole lot of anchors who will accept that stable coin as a basis for payments for making it happen. The problem is, if your token is valued, and let's say if I have an Apple coin and my Apple coin is valued at $2.10, that's, that's the problem. I've now introduced a third currency. However, if my Apple coin was pegged one to one towards the US dollar, then it's just a US dollar coin. So it's like a, like a USD tethered or what have you. And herein, li herein lies the problem. A lot of these companies came out with their own tokens, you know. So they have the X token, the Y token, the Z token, all trading in their own prices. So now you have the US dollar to their token, their token to some others, and liquidity is a huge issue. When you try to go and sell, try to go and buy, etc., based on that token price, the price can fluctuate. Now some may say, well, well, we'll peg it to the US dollar, but even those ones are finding it very hard to find anchor clients. So let's say you have an ecosystem, you have a million dollars worth of coins and those coins are pegged to the US dollar one on one. Well, who's using it? If you are willing to use it, is your counterparty that you want to pay to willing to use it? And if they are willing to use it and they immediately want to liquidate it, well, that's not the point. The whole point is that it should not be liquidated, that the coin should keep on circulating within the system. So if they liquidate it, uh, where are they going to sell it? Sell it back in a US exchange and then transfer to the SWIFT fire transfer? You know, they don't want to get into that hassle because there's another 20% or oh, sorry, uh, 25 basis points or 30 basis points being paid as exchange fees, etc. So why would they want to do that? So in most cases, stable coins have failed as far as value transfer are concerned. I'm talking about non-US dollar pegged stable coins. They have absolutely failed. Like I said, XLM, and XRP are the exception to the rules, but in most cases they have failed. And money transfer companies that are now trying to invest in these or look into these, you know, stable coins or even come up with their own stable coin, uh, I caution them a lot. You know, I, a few, um, I think a few months ago, a couple of software providers came to me and large network providers, a large uh, conglomerate of you know, multiple uh, MTOs came to me and they said, you know, we'd like to have our own trading IOU and our own tradable coin. 
and I advised them against it. Uh, and you know, luckily for me and for them, it, you know, it turned out to be true that it was not a good idea. That you know, having a stable coin and then if it's only going to be immediately liquidated, it just doesn't make sense. I do have a reserved opinion on Ripple and XRP uh, and you know Stellar and XLM, but I will do that separately in two separate videos where I try to explain what Ripple is and how they're trying to solve a problem and will it they will they be successful at it or not, it's particularly with respect to the XRP and with Stellar with respect to the XLM. But on and on, if you're talking about stable coins. No, they are a huge failure when it comes to value transfer for money transfer networks. Anyways, I hope if you, you, know, you can agree or disagree with me, there's a contact form in the description below. Please give me your opinion. I'll be happy to you know, answer your questions and voice it next time around. But anyways, till next time, this is Faisal Khan signing off.